Hello everyone, welcome to Endless Legend. This is a game we'll be playing through a little bit, and uh, yeah, it's one of my favorite 4X strategy games as of recent. It is topped most of my favorite games like Civ 5. I do love Civ 5 quite a bit. Uh, Age of Wonders 3, Warlock 2, those are all great 4X games, but at the moment, Endless Legend is my game. So let's start a new game. So here you have a ton of settings to do here. Uh, we're gonna go single player only, obviously. I don't want to play with people while recording because it'd be difficult for a long game like this. Empires, I think we'll go... Uh, we'll go three. Just as a starting game, really. Difficulty normal, game speed endless, take your time to crush your opponent, 600 turns max. I don't like being rushed, personally. I find it less fun. Let's do a Pangea. Chaotic temperature. There's a lot of settings. I'll show you some settings, I guess. So here you have a lot of settings for your world shape. Islands. Uh, I'll just leave it on a few. See around the edges? Yeah. We're wrapped. So the world wraps around. Hemispheres, top and bottom. 50% of the map is land. Let's make that like 60%, shall we? Continent spread, I'll leave it chaotic. Chaotic is a uh, like kind of random, I guess. But not quite. No, I guess it's not random. I don't know. Region size. Let's keep it normal. Maybe we'll go small, actually. Nah, normal's good. Lakes, I'll leave lakes and rivers randomized. Empire spawn, you'll spawn averages and apart from each other. Strategic resources will be common on the game map. I'll leave that. I'll leave all this. This all looks pretty good. So let's hit apply. So that's world settings here. We got a small world, four players, but we're doing three. Uh, here you have game settings. So you can go battle pace, so you can speed up the battles to be very fast, which I would recommend doing. Because you still get to watch it, but it's in sped up time, which... You don't want to spend a lot of time just watching combat. You have time turns, you can turn that on. I'm not going to turn that on since it's just me here. That'd be silly. A uh, bunch of different types of victory conditions. So, you build a wonder, you win through diplomacy, win through money, you win through expanding, I guess, covering most of the world, 80% of the world in land. Eliminate your opponents, obviously. Having the highest score, that's a stupid one. I'm just leaving that off. Uh, scientific victory, so you get the highest research. Build a wonder, which is at the end of the game, and win through capturing uh, capitals. So, those all look good. The factions in this game are all pretty cool. The Mazari are restricted. I was not aware of that. Uh, so basically the cultists are... Uh, the Dominion and Zerg are uh, custom. I made those. Because you can actually... take a template, like the units and stuff, from a... say Broken Lords, for example. And if I click Add... I can then customize what perks and such I want on my Broken Lords, so I can take away these if I didn't want those and add something else. And you can go up to 80 here with this uh, thing. So I'm at 105, I couldn't do that. I could take negative perks to lower that if I so chose, and then I could get more positive perks. So that's pretty cool, you can actually pretty much make your own little faction. It's a very cool feature, I don't want to actually be them. Uh, I'll, d I'll describe them briefly. These are the elves. They, uh... Actually, it's best to look at them here. Windwalkers. Each team has four... different unit types. So you start... Every team has a settler. These guys have rangers. Uh, a shaman. Which is a support unit. And a walker, which is a big infantry unit for them. So each team has... Uh, three different types of units and a settler. And each team's units are pretty different. And each team's playstyle is pretty different. These guys focus around money, if I 
you repair your units with money, you build everything with money. It's just, they're money. Which, in this game, is called Dust. So they're a very dust-heavy team. Everything focused around dust. These guys are very foresty. A lot of things are focused around forest, when I can tell. I never played them before. I've only played the Broken Lords, briefly the Necrophages, as I made the Zerg out of them. Very briefly the Cultists, very briefly the Draken, and that's it. So I haven't actually played that much of this game. But, from what I have played, it's very fun. Uh, Vaulters, they're a science type team. So they got a bunch of stuff. So they got crossbowmen and uh, soldiers and titan. There's these guys as well. Also a science team. Don't know much about them. These guys, I named these guys Zerg because they have insect units kind of like Zerg. They don't really look like Zerg, but that's just their leader. Units, I guess, do, sort of. But they work, and you can't, uh... You can't declare peace with this faction or anything, and they, uh... They stockpile food from kills, it's interesting. These guys, uh, are mages. They're very science-heavy. Uh, these guys are not able to declare war, and they're very trade-heavy, so that's what they do. So they control the auction house and whatnot, or the marketplace, as it's called. Draken are uh, diplomatic people, so they try to win through diplomatic means. They have very tanky, strong units. The Cultists, which is the team I've been trying out recently, uh, they can have one city, and one city only. So you have to work that way, and that seems to be a severe disadvantage in this game, from what I can tell. So I don't know how good they actually are, but I'm going to choose them for this anyway, because I want to play with them. I'll leave the other two ran uh, factions on random, and we will go with that. So there should be a little intro cutscene after the game loads. I'll let you take a gander at that, and then we'll get into the game. Here we go. The Endless broke us when they broke themselves. Now we are few, and many that remain are of little use. Yet our purpose still drives us. Even death cannot be allowed to stop us. We must find new converts, new servants, who will help us fulfill the great oaths we took so long ago. They will not only be our hands and our eyes, they will be the sword and the shield of our armies that will bring the eternal end. First upon Oraga, and then across the universe. Right, so I don't really, really know what the backstory is, but apparently I'm some psychotic cult. Uh, so, uh, here I'm starting the game. The dragons pop up here, because they st one of their perks is they start off knowing every other faction that starts in the game. So I could start negotiations or whatever, but I'm not going to do that, because don't have for any reason to do that. Alright, so welcome to Endless Legend. This is the game map. I can turn on the hex grid here. I can turn on uh, show tile. The fit, It's called Fidzy, which is a... Well, I'll show you that once I get a, a city. So let's see. Look for a good spot to find a city here. Building close to anomalies is good. From what I can tell, uh, there's an eight food tile there. That's pretty good. Let's see what else we got. Since I have one city and one city only, I kind of want to make it in a good, good spot. There's a seven science tile right there. That's pretty good. That's not too shabby. Just make sure there's nothing better. And, uh, Depends on what your definition of better is, really. I mean, I'm not a science-heavy team, so this might not actually be the best place for me to go. And I think I agree with that statement I just made. 18 food, 8 production, 5 gold. Or... 16 production, 5 food. 
You know, I like that. That's a good spot. All right, cool. So this is the city screen. Here I can build uh, buildings. So I'll do that. This is what units are garrisoned in my uh, city here. This is the list of what I'm building. And here I can move my uh, population to specify what I want to build. So this is food, this is production, science. And this is dust, which is gold. And this is influence, which you use to... Influence is used for quite a few things. It's used to declare war. Anything negotiable, like declare war, declare peace, compliments, an enemy, you name it. It has quite a few functions. So I will take my uh, take my men and go exploring. Exploring in the beginning is a good way. You, know, you explore these temple ruins here, you'll probably get gold or you'll get a quest. There is a little mini quest system in this game that is quite interesting and you'll see come into play. Alright, so this is the science tree. Um, here I choose my science. There is six tiers of science. I'm not going to scroll all the way over because that will take decades. But I have to choose what I want to start with. I think this would be a good thing for me to go for first. For my faction, I need uh, a lot of approval. So I need this purple star stuff here. So I think going for that will be good. And here's a quest. This is my uh, my faction quest. So I have to convert two finer factions, faction villages, into the cult. So I will need to save a bunch of this influence points to do just that. So I move my army. Now I'll end my turn. They'll do their movement. So if I click on this, click search, my hero gets a, or my army gets a little experience, and I found 30 dust in that ruin. So that's free money for me. So yeah, the game is very similar to Civ in a way. Like, you, you explore, you find your ancient ruins. You uh, build your cities up, just like Civ. And you can even allocate your people to what you want them to do, kind of, just like Civ, but a little bit, little bit more specified in this game, which I approve of. Combat is, uh... Some people don't like the combat in this game, say it's a weakest point in this game. I don't mind it. I think it's pretty good. It gets the job done. Age of Wonders 3 would be a better example of combat, but I feel this game does have pretty good combat for what it is. So it, it works for the game. I have no complaints personally. So, oh, I've encountered a new minor faction, the Ursis. So if I pacify these little minor factions, I can get bonuses from assimilating them into my empire. So the more of these, uh, and I can build their unit type, which would be useful as well. But if the more of them I have, I'd get 5% building cost reduction. So that would be good if I wanted to pacify that faction. Pacifying them, you can either do a quest for them, you can uh, destroy their village and rebuild it. Or you can bribe them, I think. Oh, I found a quest in the ruin. Produce 40 industry in one of your cities for 10 turns. Ah. Uh, well, I could try. 40. Oh, I should already have that, actually. Let's double check it's actually counting. After we research something new. Oops. Alright, we'll build the sewer system we just researched. That'll keep my population uh, past content. The happier your population is, the better bonuses you get. If it gets negative, you get uh, debuffs for your empire, like minus production and gold or whatever. Also, your heroes can level up. So, you have a skill tree for each hero. And uh, this one is generally shared, I think it's always shared between each uh, race. In faction. There's a class one, so there's like defense, life, accessory slot, etc. 
And then this one has like, if I govern, if I set him to be a governor of the city, he will give bonuses to the city, such as that, which is what I'm going to choose, because I will eventually make him a governor. I can do science on the city, defense on units, plus influence on the city. That's a good one, and gold on the city. So he'll eventually be a governor for me. Let's go back to the research queue. I'm going to go for a. I think seed storage is pretty good. Get the more food going. Also, let's go back to this quest to make sure it's actually tracking it. Zero of ten. Has it, I'm not sure if it even counted a turn yet. Just in case, move that guy to production. Hmm. I'm pretty sure I'm doing that. <laughs> Shouldn't be too difficult. Population has grown to two, so now I can allocate this guy elsewhere if I wanted to. I do need influence. I don't want to move them all. I'll keep one in population. I should probably keep them both in population growth, honestly. I need more people. The more people you get, the more points you have to allocate to other uh, things. Also, if it mentions Fidzy, Fidzy is is this. So it's food, uh, industry, science, dust, and influence. That's what the Fidzy stands for, in that order. So if that ever gets mentioned, like this thing right here, which is show hide Fidzy tile, that's what that means. Alright, it's in our turn. And I'm by no means a pro at this, you know, like I said, I've not played it that much. I've been playing a little bit with my roommate, but other than that, I haven't done a whole lot. And I played with factions I created, just to play for fun. Found 10 spices in that one, that's not bad. Guess I can explain that. So, you can find luxury resources and strategic resources. This looks like a lot of information I'm taking in, I realize, and it kind of is. But... If I find spice, or say wine or whatever, I have the ability to activate that said booster. This will get plus 50% uh, food production on cities and 5% approval rating on cities. So I'm going to use that. Now, for 20 turns, I get that effect. So, and it says booster costs 10, so if I ever get 10 again, I can do that again once that runs out. And you can do that for all kinds of uh, resources you find. There's quite a few. Encountered the minor faction Nidia. Bird-like people. Okay, so that's them right there. So I'll try and convert these people into my crazy-ass cult faction. Oh, crap. Is he going to attack me? I'm slightly worried, I'm not going to lie. I think I'm going to run. The dragon people are pretty strong. Probably a lot stronger than my crap, you guys. So I think it's best if we make a hasty retreat. Maybe I can upgrade my hero as well. You can also upgrade your equipment of your uh, hero and your armies. You get four ba or three basic types of troop but you upgrade your troops so you can actually you can make new setups of troops like if I want to have a setup of my infantry with a claymore and a setup of my infantry with a shield and sword I can do that and it's basically like two different units or you can just keep upgrading your same unit which is good too so I don't have anything good for this but I do have this improved movement choker talisman thing and a improved vision sharp sense ring which is plus one vision and plus 20 percent tax against range attack or defense against range attacks so that's pretty good i'll equip those for a little bit of bunny for a little dust and then end my turn looks like he's walking around pacifying villages it means he's just destroying them basically 
Not destroying per se, but knocking them down. It would be a better term to use. Alright, sewer system is bought. Now we people are happy again. Happy gives me a plus 15% per, uh, production bonus and food bonus. So very good to have. One turn, I level up my food again. So I'll have a population of three. So we can get a plus one slot militia. Which is uh, people, little guys that defend your city. More city defense and uh, a little experience for anyone garrisoned in it. Barrows are how you uh, expand your city. I'll probably go barrow, I think. But the more barrows you get, the more disapproval rating you get. So you gotta balance that out. And this team can have the biggest city of all teams because it has only limit of one city. Uh, I think the best... Ooh, that's pretty good. Ideally, I want production and food. I think that's the best spot I'm going to get. So I'll build my little burrow there. And when that's done, that'll give me a bunch more of these tiles to actually come into my city's influence. Giving me bonuses. Population has changed my city. Also, just like Civ and all the rest of those games, there's a little like notification tab over on the right side. A lot of things feel very familiar if you played Civ 5. Or even Warlock. Warlock similar. I believe. Also a great 4x strategy game, I'd recommend. Check it out. Warlock 2, if you can. Warlock 1 is pretty much the same as Warlock 2, but Warlock 2 is better. So I would I would choose that one. Anyway, back on topic. Not a whole lot to do at the moment. I do need to go pacify a village. Possibly a... I'll go up here, talk to them. See if they have a quest maybe I can complete for them. To bring them into my fold. So what I've heard, my basic unit is very bad. My uh, chariot guy, whatever they're called. So I've skipped to fanatics. Is what I've read. I read up a little bit on the faction just to see how they worked. People said recommended fanatics as their first line unit. I don't worry about that right now. I'm not too worried about it, you know. I think uh, getting a glass steel harvester would be good. Possibly. So this allows me to resort, uh, build titanium and glass steel extractors, so I'll go for that. And I'll do the other one here. Actually, I don't know if I need that. This gives gold, so that's good to get. Also, you can rename your cities if you like. Uh, I'm gonna make my city Mega City. And this right here, that's the max amount of characters you can have for your city. Which is kind of a bummer, but not the end of the world. But you can only have one city per region. That's how this game works. So if you take a region, you get that, that whole region to yourself. And it also renames the entire region Mega City. Pretty cool. Also, the game looks very pretty, as you'll notice. It's got a great art style, graphic style. It doesn't look as good on my TV monitor thing. I use a older HD TV as a monitor, so things don't look as good as they should. But on my roommate's TV, it looks a lot better than mine. Let's talk to this village. I feel like I feel like we should talk to this village. Well, I need 40 influence to convert them. Let's... Let's do that. So, we need... 6... Potentially we could get that... By putting 2 people in there for one turn. And let's switch them back to food real quick. I think more production I get, or people I get, the better I'll be off if I have one city. So let's try converting. I've never converted a city yet, or a village. Okay. So I converted the village, I guess. So I'm now getting 
one science, two gold from them? Sent to the city? I think that's how it works. Oh, there's a ruin up there. Uh, stop moving. Damn it. So I can assimilate them into my empire if I wanted to. That takes 60, but that'll give me the 5% initiative, initiative per pacified village of this type. I don't really want initiative. Initiative is great, but I don't feel like I'm going to need that at the moment, so I'm not going to worry about that. So hopefully there would be something nice in this ruin. There would be nicer stuff if I was like perked or respect towards finding stuff in ruins, because you can do that. If I click here, go to skill tree, this first thing, improve search on ruins. Make sure so your ruin searching is better. There's also a tech down here, improve search on ruins. So potentially if you had both of those you'd be making, finding better stuff. I don't. Also I was going to put my hero in my city and I forgot, but oh well. I guess I'll keep exploring with them for now. I could have just explored these preacher units. But my hero does get experience for searching. I think once he levels up again I'll send him back to the village. Unless I already bought that thing. Oh, I should send him back then. Okay. So I can unassign him from my army. I'm gonna do that. Send him back to the academy, which is this screen here. And I can assign him to a city to be a governor. So I want him to govern their mega city. And he will do that. And then I will get the bonuses from what he uh, gives. And everyone is happy. Four turns, I can get the city expansion as well. I can rush it for 146 dust if I want. I don't think I want. I think I'll rush a seed storage instead, which gives me a, a bunch of food during summer, and just food in general. I think that would be a good uh, thing to get. Three turns isn't very long to wait for a burrow. But I do have a lot of people now. So potentially I could just... Actually... Nah, I probably shouldn't. I shouldn't. But I do need influence quite a bit, so... That's good. I don't need to worry about production too much at the moment, it doesn't look like, because there's nothing really to produce that I need uh, direly or anything. So we'll just we'll do that. Alright, so my next research is coming up. I just finished the research, meaning I can make a glass steel extractor. So anywhere on my region, like if there's a type uh, tile here with glass steel on it, I could put my glass steel extractor here. It doesn't have to be right next to the city or anything, it just has to be in your region. But there's one right here. So I'll build on top of that, and it will start to build. And then that will start giving me glass steel per turn, which is a strategic resource used to build troops and all sorts of things. Upgrades. Or troops. There's the enemy city. Quite close, actually. Should probably get out of here, because we are in a Cold War status, meaning if I walk into his territory, he can attack me. But we're not technically at war. And my hero is leveled up. Which is always good news. So I could either get another level of this, which would give another plus one to everything. Or I could go up and get plus 15 science on a city. Which would continue me up towards this, which is probably what I want. I think I'll go for that. Also, I'll show you uh, real quick in the armies tab. Here, I can create, I can edit like uh, my existing army. So this is my weird ass unit here. It's like a little ranged mute maybe melee unit. It's a support actually. Support units aren't really frontline troops at all, so it's not really a unit you want to use for combat as your frontline. But, I could equip 
armor and uh, boots on this guy. Potentially I could equip a better weapon. Not at this time. And also I could give him plus movement. That is actually worth it. But this will this will save. This will be the new default tab for the preachers. So preacher, new preachers come out with all this stuff on, but they will cost significantly more production to make. I feel that's worth it, but... And you could also make a new one. Say you wanted, like I said, you could use a, one with a claymore, one with a spear, and just have different types against different units. You could do that. So it's their way of hybridizing their unit system, so you, it's like you have multiple different types of class of units, but you don't. You really only have three to work with, and you just, like I said, hybridize them from a... Hybridize them isn't a word. Hybrid? I don't know. I don't know what the multiple of that would be. But yeah, you hybrid them to work with different weapons and armor against different things. So it's a cool system. Cool system I like. Alright, so our glass steel extractor is about to finish. I'll queue up something else. I could burrow again, but keep in mind my happiness will go down. Unless I have a booster of some kind. I don't really know if I want to do that because I'll start losing... I'll lose uh, my bonuses. So, you really don't want to expand too fast, honestly. It's not a benefit, in a way. I think this will be good. This actually gives half of experience to my unit in the garrison, which I think my my militia, yeah, those count, and my hero probably counts as well. My spice booster wore off, so that sucks. I don't have enough to replenish it. Later on, I'll open up a the marketplace and you can buy stuff like resources and whatnot like glass steel and spices and you can sell them as well two-headed werewolves well, that's quite the village isn't it they've already been pacified it looks like we'll head over this way I do need to convert two minor factions and I've already converted one, so I'm halfway there. I have plenty of uh, influence points. Influence points is also used for something else. So he is praising me. Just give me a little praise. When you praise another empire, you and the empire gain uh, influence production for a little bit. So it's a friendly thing to do for uh, both teams. I'm not looking to start new wars because I, I'm not really a faction that's based on war per se. I can pacify them immediately. Or I could do a quest. I think I'm just going to bribe them. And then I'll convert them into my my thing here. So that spawns some village units. Since this village is still intact, I guess it spawns a village guy. And I have a little garrison in my village. Ah, I see. I don't know if I'm gaining anything from these. Oh yeah, I am. I have a unit here too as well to defend my little village. So they're like mini castles that you garrison and you get the bonuses from the region inside. Pretty neat. It's an interesting uh, concept. The other factions don't work that way with these. Like you cannot assimilate, uh, convert them into your empire like that with other factions. So I do like how factions have different playstyles. A lot of them are drastically different, like this one. Kind of like playing Venice as a in Civ Five. I'll make a lot of references to Civ Five because it's a very popular and very fun uh, art 4x strategy game like this. So I have another quest after this. I gained ten Titan Bones. 
which has a a booster effect there at the bottom. Okay, let's dismiss that, and that will get me to the next quest. If you can get through your main quest line, you win the game. But it's not as easy as it sounds. Not at all. Assimilate a minor faction is my new quest. I'm pretty sure I've already done that. Oh no, assimilate. That's right here. So I can choose one of these two factions and get their little bonus. 5% building production cost reduced. That's actually not bad. So I'll, I'll also assimilate that faction. And that will complete my quest as well. Completing quests is always a good thing. I should really split this army up. Next turn, apparently. And let's get another research going. This will increase my production in my city. That sounds good. Production's always nice, right? Probably won't get to show you any combat in this first part of uh, the game, but eventually you will see. The cultists wish to study ruins. Search unspoiled ruins with at least two level two minor faction units in your army. Oh. That means I have to actually get these guys. Have them level two. And then search the ruin. Which is right here. Wants me to search this ruin with those guys. I could do that. And they're not level two though is the problem. So to get them out of your base, you click new army, which forms a new little battalion to move around. I think I'm going to move them both to my main city because they get experience for just sitting there. And I'll leave these undefended, but I think they'll be alright for now. And I'll split these guys up to go exploring. No construction? Okay. Uh, let's go for... Ah, environment. That's a good one. More gold. More gold is always good. Or dust, if you want to call it that. Because that's what it's called. But yeah, there's, there's a lot to this game. I'm sure I'm not showing off a lot of things, or maybe explaining some things cor incorrectly, which is totally possible. I'm just going off what I know, or think I know. And it's hard to explain all that, everything in one, like, sitting, you know. Nobody just wants to sit there and intake information the whole time, which is more or less what I've been doing, but... Just want people watching to have a feel for the game if they haven't played it before. So they know a little bit what's going on. Because I know I'd be a little confused watching this game be like, uh, what's that? What's going on? Alright, there's another village here. Let's parlay with them. Parlaying adds a quest from that qu uh village and they will join me if I fulfill that quest. So that quest was, I didn't actually read it. Free their people from the Hernus village in Jayan. So where is Jayan? Jayan is here, this region. Somewhere. There's a Hernus village. That must be it. So that is the place that I need to go. I need to destroy that village to free the people of that that tribe here, and then they will join my faction. Doesn't sound too difficult, right? Also, this is how you garrison units in your city. Click on the unit, and you click garrison, and it will shove him in there. Also do it with him. So now my capital has these guys guarding it, which actually makes my city stronger defensively, which is always a bonus, but also they'll start getting a little bit of experience from uh, just sitting in there. 
And once I hit level 2, I'll go do that quest. So I guess I'll have this, plus one slot of militia. More defense for my city. Since I only have one city, and I lose the city, I lose the game. It's probably important that I don't lose the city. This is also my city defense. I will show you that later. Just to make things easier. I'll show you what the, how that it's affected. Let's get that ruin first. Oh god, okay. Here's the Empire Planner. So every... Like 30 turns or so, I think. I'm not sure what it is. You spend your influence points in this tech tree. And the farther you go in, in, uh, in a direction, the more bonuses it's unlocked. But the higher the price gets. So I could go this way, this way, this way, and this way. Wow, I can actually afford to do all these. That's pretty nice. So I will do that. But if I was in a tier 2 era, there would be another bonus on each of these uh, trees and then I could go another additional ring and get the bonus so yeah you have to save up uh, influence points for that to happen that happens every well I guess they'll tell me next turn Let's hit next turn real quick every 40 turns it does that also I have some boosters I can use if I want to Plus science on cities and approval. Sure. Plus production on cities and approval. I don't think I'm going to use that one yet. I think stockpiling production one for something that's actually useful is good. Because I will eventually run out of things to produce. Here. In fact, right after this. I don't really want to burrow yet. Because I want to keep my happiness up. I might. I don't know. Yeah, maybe I do. Let's find a good spot for this. Uh, that's not terrible. Four food, eight production, one goal, or science. I like that. Let's go there. See, the price goes up significantly as well for things. Like, that's 1400 gold now. I have 97, so I will never be able to rush that thing. The cheaper it is, or the more production's put into it, the cheaper it is. But still, that will be a fortune. Not gonna happen. I don't think I'll be able to take this village out without sending my hero to my army, so I will probably do that. I guess we should probably unlock our fanatic. And possibly... I don't know if I need this, because do I have any extractors, or things to extract in my zone? I have a glass steel extractor, but I don't have any... Oh, I do. I have an emerald deposit. So I could make an emerald extractor, so I'll do that as well. I'll do that first, in fact. So I'll queue that after that. Yeah. Also, a library would be good. Probably go for that. Alright, let's search this ruin here. And then give me a quest, come back and search this room with a little Delver unit, which is basically a dwarf. Okay, so we'll do that later. Ooh, there's some Hydra Snake thingies. Don't really want to tussle with them, honestly. Maybe they'll walk away. Dragon guy just attacked my little side village over here. So now no one controls it. That's what happens when you don't defend your things. They get taken out by angry dragons. What a jerk. So I probably need to hurry up and get back to my base. I assume. So since they're up here, I'm going to assign my hero. I'm going to take him, select him, and now he's assigned from the city to my army, and I can do... 
Apparently I have to walk down a little hill. So there's a lot of diplomatic things you can do as well in this game. Like, you could close your borders off. As long as you're not at war, I could close my borders off to anyone else. They couldn't come in. Uh, the trader people have the ability to lock people out of, like, the mercenary market and whatnot. That's useful stuff. It's really a little more depth in some games. Alright, I can show you a little combat. So you can start your troops in offensive stance. Uh, they'll just go attack. Defensive, they'll kind of play defensive or hold position. They won't move. You can start the battle with an AI uh, doing your moves for you. You can just auto resolve, which I'm not going to do. Or you can fight the men battles manually. I'm going to do that. So I feel that's the way to do it. So, deployment, I can choose where I want my troops. Probably want him there, and there, and there. That looks good. There's a. Uh, tactics, it looks like. I'm not going to worry about that. So, this is what they will target. So I could say, hero target this guy, or this guy target him, or and then have these guys start targeting whatever they please, and then hit go, and then they will just move. So you don't directly control the combat, but you do in a way. It's interesting. My hero's pretty tough, he should be quite alright here. It's also very strange. This faction's very weird looking. Let me look at how long the necks are. It's very strange. Individual. Alright, I'm gonna have him attack him. The other guys can do whatever. That's why these units aren't very good. People say he's skipping. He's really not very good. And he really shouldn't be advancing <laughs> on the other guy. I think these guys can heal, so I'll have him heal. I may just end up losing these two entirely. It's quite possible. If that happens, not the end of the world. Your hero's finally down the hill. And I can attack. Oh, I lost the chariot thingy. Unfortunate, but not unsurprising. Yeah, it looks fine. So I'm probably going to need to get my uh, my second tier of unit just so I could stop using these. But you have a certain amount of time or a certain amount of turns to finish combat. Ah, can't do it again. So I have to wait a turn. Attack again. I think this time I'm just going to auto-resolve. I didn't lose anything. It's a good sign. Get a little experience. And I got my quest done. Turn to the tribe's village and restore their trust. Also, I can convert this village if I wanted. I think I do, you know? Why not? The more villages I get, the more uh, bonuses I get from other things. I'm not going to take that uh, garrison unit out. The only reason I did that before was because I needed them level 2 to do another quest. But that did cost me uh, that. Looks like the dragons have been expanding. I will probably be surrounded by dragon cities not too long because I can't actually expand. Which is the huge downside of this, ta this uh, faction. But I'm giving them a shot, you know. I want to see if they can actually win a game. Because I can, I can, can still control a, I can control all these villages inside of enemy territory as well. So just because they have a, the area doesn't mean I can't get my bonuses from a little village. All right. I guess we just need to get close. Let me parlay again. 
So we got 10 Quicksilver and Pacification in the village. Now it's pacified, let's convert it to our insane religion. And that gives us a free unit. And also this village is making a it's making us 0 0.1 titanium, 0 0.2 spices. So you can get uh, resources from different lands, but very, very minimal. But the more villages I get in that region, the more I could get potentially. Okay, so I want to send my hero back home because I feel he better. Oops. <coughs> better use as a governor. Oops. Did wrong again. He is actually locked out for five turns of being able to switch places. So you can't just spam teleport him around like crazy. I'll have to walk over here. That's fine. Not a big deal. The preacher should probably not walk over there. I think the preacher could still be used to explore. Oops. I moved my hero. I guess the hero will teleport in five turns anyway. When I do that. Produce 40 in stream one of your cities for 10 turns. Get the reward. I completed that quest. So I get 15 influence for that. Very nice. So my city's at 5 population. Which is shown by this 5 above the person seeing here. Uh, I have a lot more people. I think I actually get extra people from being assimilating in my city. So that's where like five of these little people tokens come from population. And then these other three, I guess, are coming from assimilating uh, factions. Or converting factions, possibly. One of those two. So that's neat. I can get my city quite big quite quickly, in fact. Maybe we'll talk to these guys. And it looks like this little village is about to be attacked by snakes. Should probably go help. Nope, guess not. Thank goodness. Well, I could either bribe them, I could attack them. Or I could parlay and potentially do a quest. I think I'm just gonna bribe. You know, cut the bull. The bull. And now we have another village in our empire. Cool. Well, that's pretty neat. Alright, I think this is a good place to wrap up part one. I don't know how long it's been going, so... Yeah, let's do that. Oh, there's the red border. Well, that's no good. Alright, so uh, join me in part two where we continue this game. And yeah, if you like it, uh, good. Hope you like it. And I recommend getting this game. If you do like 4X strategy games, it's very, very good. And yeah, see you in the next part.